What's up guys, Graham here. I have to say a huge thank you to JP, which donated 10 bucks to me. I, I hardly ever get money donations. It's so cool that you donated to me and you set me up on a recurring payment system. So you're gonna be doing it every month. That is crazy to me. I often get people saying that I'm money hungry and I do YouTube just for the money and all that. Well, that's a hard thing to say because in the year that I've been doing YouTube, I've gotten about four money donations since I've been doing it. All the rest has been in-game donations, which has been very, very cool. I highly appreciate it, but yeah, I did it for the money. But it certainly is cool whenever you guys do send me money because it helps a lot. Thank you for all your support, JP. I cannot thank you enough. You are awesome, sir, and keep on rocking. Now we get to the point where I give you guys stuff, so let's get on with it. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last video where we were doing a giveaway, which was about on Tuesday, I think it was, then you are entered into this giveaway of anything you want from the Rift store as long as it's 5,000 credits or less and is giftable. And the winner of that giveaway is... Right there. Congratulations, we'll be sending you a message just shortly on YouTube to find out what you want from the Rift Store. And since Tryon still has the Typhoon Edition available in the Rift Store, I'm going to go ahead and give one of those away again this week. So if you would like a chance to win the Typhoon Edition and get all of your earring slots unlocked and lots of good items and all that stuff that comes with a collector's package like that, then all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this very video video with your character name and server and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and hit that like button because it always helps. The winner will be selected at random and announced in the next Saturday video. Good luck everyone. What's up guys? Today we're going to go into a 61 Warlock build and I know what you're thinking. That's a dot spec. Grim doesn't play dot specs. Yes, I don't play dot specs normally because I've played like Necromancer builds in the past and it was absolutely terrible, man. It, you go out there and you dot everybody up. And it's all fluff damage. They heal right through it. And then once anybody gets onto you, you had no CCs and you just laid over and died. It was a terrible experience and I did not want to revisit that at all cost. But whenever people was telling me that Warlock had good burst... I was skeptical. I was like, okay, but I am willing to learn. So I reached out to you guys in my Eyes of the Warlock video and I said, hey, submit to me your Warlock builds. I would love to learn this. And if it turns out good, I'll make a video on it. Well, Sergio made a comment in the comment section of that video and told me his Warlock build, which was very cool because almost everybody that was submitting Warlock builds to me was the 61 Warlock 15 necromancer builds but apparently that's kind of outdated and now people are using nine necromancer and six harbinger but that's still like a pve build and that's not quite what i was looking for so uh i was looking for more answers so to say for pvp and void maker ended up making a post on the pvp forums and he actually linked my video and he showed his uh warlock build and it was very good as well uh, and it also got a lot of people talking about Warlock PvP, so it got me to where I was going, okay, these are a lot of good Warlock players giving some insight, I need to learn from it. So I took everything I could, and this is the uh, result. Um, but I also have to give a big thanks to Wave Strike from the Trinity Guild, because he was the name that was thrown at me, so I went ahead and contacted him and said, what are you running? And he was the only one that submitted to me his Stormlock build. And uh, he went with Stormcaller instead of Harbinger, which most people are going with. And I modified it some for myself, and you'll see the result just now. If you'd like to watch Wave Strikes gameplay as a Stormlock, just go to his uh, Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash Wave Strike. And you'll get to see his gameplay as a lock. And he's a very good player, so you would enjoy that. Alright, let's go ahead into the soul tree here. Now, uh, 
if you would like to see this build on a website, I will have a link in the description below so that you can just click on the link and go to a web page and be able to look at it without having to squint your eyes at this video or pause the video or anything like that. Feel free to refer to this description below for all of that, as well as all the macros once they come up. I'll have them all posted below. So, as you can see, we went 61 into Warlock, so fill up that entire tree. 9 into Necromancer, which is 5 points into Death's Ally, 3 points into Flesh Rot, and 1 point into Consumption. And then 6 points into Stormcaller. Uh, I went 5 points into uh, Storm Energy and 1 point into Living Storm. And you can swap that around and take the points out of Storm Energy and go into like High Voltage if you want the damage reduction as well. Which is, it'll add up to 5% damage reduction which is pretty good. I was highly... Uh, uh, I was really debating which one I wanted to go with, but I ended up going with Storm Energy. You go with what you would like. This build can be modified as you see fit. And on our masteries here, we went to Final Breath for the 61. For 62, we went Healing Expertise. 63, we went into Mental Sinister. I believe that's how you say it. Not sure. All right, in level 64, we went into Sparking Destruction. 65, I took Arcane Manipulation. Now, the level 65 mastery can be modified quite a bit. It's uh, all about what you want. Uh, the Arcane Manipulation adds a lot of burst to your build, but a lot of people will want to go into Phantom Stream instead for the self-heal. And uh, we've got a defensive macro that whenever we pop it, it makes us take like 80% less damage for like seven seconds or something like that. And it applies a rune shield to us and all that. But if you have Phantom Stream also in that macro, you might even be able to heal up to full and have a complete reset with a shield and all this good stuff. So if you need more defensives, go with Phantom Stream. If you want more burst, go with Arcane Manipulation. All right. So the buffs that we got is Dark Armor and Nedra's Might. And of course, any guild or planar buffs that you feel like running. All right, let's go into the macros here. Now, I must say that if you do not have Stormcaller, just go ahead and pick up like Dom, and you can just put six points into Dom instead and have a uh, Neural Prod in your spam macro in th instead of Thundershock here. So, um, if you want to be able to just copy and paste all these macros, I'll have them in the description below, like I mentioned earlier. And the macros will likely change, so you probably want to refer to down there anyway, instead of trying to look at the video, because I've been changing things all the time with this build, and it's best to see the updated versions in the description below. Alright, we have a spam macro, we have a burst macro here, which I need to put at self on arcane manipulation all right there you go see all the time updating all right and then we have an interrupt macro we have a fear macro push pull which is that's a term that wave strike used to me uh it's basically using salvage corruption to pull all of your dots off of a target and then you can use deathly paul to reapply them to that same target all refreshed or you can apply them to a new target, whichever you'd like. All right, then we got our defensive macro, which it has rune shield in it, and that is a planar attunement ability, so you may not have it if you do not have enough points into planar attunement yet, but if you do, make sure that you put it in the macro. It's awesome, and of course, if you went with Phantom Stream, make sure that you put that in the macro as well, because that's a huge heal to go with all the defensive abilities that you have here. All right, what I have on my bar down here, we have the spam macro, we have the burst macro, the push-pull macro, we have radiate death, we have the defensive macro, we have death touch, or death, dark touch, should I say, uh, defile, atrophy, necrosis, death's door, uh, break free on a separate button, do not put it on your macros, people. We have a interrupt macro, we have a fear macro we have rift tomb here which rift tomb is another planar ability so only uh, put it on your bar well 
expect to have it if you have your planar ability uh, there because if you don't have enough planar attunement to have rift tomb don't expect to have it available and uh, we have mortality which this is an ability that not too many people told me to use but it seemed really cool as soon as I looked at it uh, I'll explain it more as we go on later we have consumption on the bar and then we have living storm all right so let's get right into how to play this build here uh, most people have been playing lock as just a dot build and I'm using it as a burst build and what I'm going to be doing and showing you guys I was not told to do by anybody that plays warlock because everybody is just playing it as a dot build and then they have a burst macro that does pretty good damage but it's not quite the damage that I'm going to show you all right so what we're going to do is we're going to dot up the dummy here. Uh, first thing we want to do, of course, is consumption. We want to remove buffs off of our opponent. And the more we remove buffs, the better it is and the easier it's going to be to kill these people. But, of course, the dummy does not have any buffs, so it is not allowing me to cast consumption. But that's normally what you want to use. And it's on a five-second cooldown, so use it quite often and debuff these people as much as you can. All right. And then we're going to apply all of our dots onto the opponent. Now, whenever I apply these dots, I'm going to use my push-pull macro in order to pull them off. That way I don't constantly have to keep casting each individual one while I'm talking to you guys because they will run out whenever I'm talking. So we're going to apply our Dark Touch, Defile, Atrophy, and Necrosis. All right, as you see, I have K alerts counting all of them down so I can keep track of them. And if they ever get removed, I can, of course, refresh them as needed. Now we're going to pull them all off. And as you see, I have K alerts showing uh, the countdown right to the left of my character there. 22 seconds, 21, 20. And that lets me know how long I can store those dots onto my character before I need to cast them back out. Uh, if you let it run all the way down, you will have to individually cast every single one of your dots again, which really sucks. All right, so let's say that we applied all of our dots to our opponent, as you see. Now I'm going to cast Radiate Death. We're going to spread it. As you see, it's spread to all these people here. Now, make sure you're radiating death because the more damage you're dealing to everybody, the better. Okay? Well... While we got our dots on our opponent, let's let's all the time pretend that our dots are on our opponent here. Uh, I'm pulling them off for the sake of the video. But we want to go ahead and use our uh, spam macro at all times. So what that's going to do is it's going to apply like Nedra's Torture to them. It's going to do our Draining Bolt. It's going to do our, uh, our what is it, uh, Thundershock. And it's going to build up our charge because we're going to need charge for our burst macro usually. So let's say that we have been dotting up our opponent and we got them pretty low and it's ready for burst time. So what we're going to do is we are going to pull all of our dots off of them and you can leave the dots on the opponent and keep ticking and hit your burst macro and it'll do good burst and your dots will be ticking off the entire time. But most people don't get caught by that stuff. They they need to have a huge burst applied to them and one that doesn't have a bunch of dots ticking off on them so it's going to catch them off guard. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll pull my dots off of somebody and continue to hit my spam button. That way they get low in health and I make sure they have death's door on them, mind you. If they get below 50% health, I want to make sure that I apply death's door to them because that can only be applied whenever they're below 50% health. And then you pull all of your buffs, your dots off of them. So say that they're below 50%, I apply death's door. I'm going to pull all of my dots off of them. Okay, and I'm going to continue to hit my spam macro. And once they get low enough to where I'm ready to hit my burst, I want to make sure that I have enough charge, of course. All right. Now, this is where it gets fun. We're about to hit the burst macro. All right. You ready? You ready? Burst time. Okay. 
If you just seen what I just seen, then you know that somebody is going to be eating a lot of damage immediately. It's going to be one of those things that basically what we're doing is we are taking all of our dots and we're applying them all at the same time with all of our uh, offensive cooldowns and our big void barrage and everything. Everything is going to be hitting at once. And the first tick of all those dots is going to be hitting all at once. So that huge column of damage. Imagine if you're in Frostkeeper gear or something like that and you're going out there and hitting these people with this kind of burst. It's going to annihilate people. And it is... I mean, I'm in all bolstered gear in right now, and I've been topping kills in a lot of the war fronts that I've been in. And it's just insane, the burst that this build can put out. And it's all about playing it right. If you uh, run around and just apply dots and then hit the burst macro, yes, you will kill people as well. But if you play the game of pulling the dots and then switching to a target that gets low in health and then hitting them with that huge burst it's going to catch people off guard and the healers are not going to see it coming and the opponent is not going to see it coming either because with arcane manipulation and conflux and all that stuff that's firing off with that burst macro you are just going to annihilate people all right and mind you, all the people that I talked to, none of them told me to do this. This is something that I figured out as I was uh, playing it and messing around with the macros and stuff. It is absolutely awesome. All right. So now that you've seen uh, the real meat of the build, you've seen uh, that you apply your dots, you radiate death, and then you can do your big burst. Let's go ahead and go into a lot of the other stuff that's uh, available to this build. Of course, you want to radiate death, like I said. But we've also got the defensive macro here. And whenever you pop this, it's going to cast Nedra's Essence. And it reduces the damage taken by 80% for 7 seconds. Well, if you have your planar attunement ability called Rune Shield, it's also in the macro too. So it'll pop that. It'll... Uh, take all of your charge and apply a shield to you. So that'll be really good. And if you went with Phantom Stream, you can also heal yourself up in the uh, defensive macro. It's absolutely awesome. Very cool. All right, now we've got to interrupt. Now this interrupt not only interrupts the opponent, but it debilitates them for five seconds. And if you need a second interrupt, We've got a second interrupt that's on a 10 second cooldown. So you've got two interrupts, man. And one of them debilitates the opponent. All right, now we have a, f a fear macro because we've got multiple fears. We've got a mass fear that fears five opponents for 10 seconds or until damaged. And it's an instant. So you can run right in the middle of a group. If you get pulled in by a warrior or something, pop that mass fear and take off running because it's going to... It's going to be awesome. And the second fear that we got is a cast time fear, which kind of sucks on that end, but yet you've got a second fear, so there's not too much to complain about. All right, then we have Rift Tomb, which this is a planar attunement ability. You may not have it if you do not have points into it yet, uh, but what it does, it, it knocks the opponent away from you, and it entraps them in like a force field that they can't move or do anything, so really go good ability there. Now we have Mortality. Mortality, basically what this does is a six second channel that it radiates damage all around you and you can't move whenever you cast it, but then again, you can't be crowd controlled whenever you cast it either. Uh, so it's gonna do like 50 to 60,000 damage to everybody around you and then it's gonna heal you for all that damage as well. So imagine you got pulled in by a warrior you pop that, your fear is down, you go ahead and pop that, and you're doing damage to everybody and healing yourself all the while. So that's really cool. All right, then we have consumption, of course. You want to use this as much as possible. It removes buffs off of your opponent. The more you debuff people, the better it is. Okay, now this last ability here is Living Storm. Now this is a hugely annoying ability for anybody caught in it. It's going to do uh, 10,000 damage over 16 seconds up to 8 opponents. 
uh, within seven me uh, meters of the initial target. So basically it's going to put an AOE on the ground for 16 seconds and be taken off on multiple opponents all around. And man, it's such a good ability. All right. Now, uh, a big concern with a lot of people is what if uh, somebody is cleansing your dots? Okay, don't worry about that because you can easily reapply the dots anytime somebody does it. And I've noticed that hardly anybody is cleansing my dots. I am applying them to people and they're just running around with all these dots taken off on them and nobody is cleansing them. Uh, there is some cleansing going on, uh, but it's very minimal. And if somebody does cleanse it, well, guess what? We have final breath here. And what that does is when cleansed, your damage over time effects deal ethereal damage to the enemy equal to 50% of your spell power. Okay, so if they cleanse your dots, it's going to hurt them. Okay, we also have uh, Nedra's Essence. Let me show you this. All right, it's right down here. Nedra's, uh, no, it's not Nedra's Essence. It's Nedra's Torture is what I'm looking for. Uh, there we go. All right, Nedra's Torture. What it does is it deals damage uh, over time, which it's in the spam macro. So whenever applied to somebody, it has it that if a damage over time effect is cleansed from the enemy, Nedra's Torture explodes dealing about 15 to 16,000 damage into the cleanser and it debilitates them for three seconds. And it can happen four times. So yeah, if they keep cleansing them, it could pop four times on them and debilitate them and do all that damage. So people that say yeah the dots are nothing because they can be cleansed guess what final breath and nedra's torture are just going to be exploding and debilitating and it's going to be insane so yeah don't worry about cleansers it's not a big deal if anything it's a big deal to them because also if they're cleansing you they're not healing people either so yeah Awesome stuff, amazing build. I'm really looking forward to playing this a lot more and making some videos of me killing everybody with it, especially once I get geared because right now I'm doing good damage and uh, have lots of CC and all that stuff, but I'm still poorly geared, so hopefully that uh, will be doing even more massive damage shortly. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you are new to Rift, make sure you use my referral code in the description below because if you use your that link down there in order to create your account, it will give you lots of stuff that you normally don't get whenever you join uh, Rift for the first time. You'll get an extra bag, which bags are very crucial early on in Rift. Uh, you'll also get a weapon enchant. You'll get a cloak. You get... Put on all of my friends list and me on yours so you know exactly whenever I get on. That way whenever you hit max level and would like to PvP with me, we will play PvP together. And trust me, anybody that uses my referral code will get priority when grouping with me. And um, also, it also gives benefits to uh, the giveaways that I do because if I give away like the trove boxes and stuff like that, you will win five times that amount of troves. So yeah, it's highly beneficial in the giveaways as well. And if you're looking for a guild, we are Grimm's Reapers on the Wolfsbane US server. And we're a very casual guild. We uh, group up in PvP quite often, but it's nothing that you're required to do or... Uh, we don't ridicule our members. We don't uh, blame them for losses or anything. We just group up with whoever is in the guild and go have fun. And it's all about having a good time and rift and not feeling pressured. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As usual, my name is Grim, and I will see you next time.